So yesterday I posted this trailer solar power system and some of my viewers had some confusion. When I said that this is designed for split phase output, I'm talking about 240 volt utility transformer with a center tap. I am not saying that this is a 240 volt single phase inverter because it's not. This is a 120 volt single phase inverter and we have three conductors that come out of it. If we had two of these in parallel and they could communicate and have their phases off by 180 degrees, then we could supply both bus bars of this panel, but we can't. And the bus bars are connected with a lead that can handle the current of three 15 amp breakers. But I will never reach that amount because the output of this inverter is not large enough. So how it's configured actually works really well. It is not to code, but my viewers did not understand that, unfortunately. And these are capable of having split phase output, like I said, when they're in parallel. And in that instance, we'd have two hots, two neutrals, and two grounds. And then we could supply all of those leads to this panel, which I've already done in a previous video. So please watch my older videos if you're new here. We have done that multiple times. And one benefit of the LV5048 is it actually does have split phase output. It has four conductors going straight to a panel with a single inverter. With the new one, you need two of them in parallel. Also, this is not UL listed, but it's UL compliant for 1741. I didn't mention that in the previous video, but that's actually a really good thing. Also, the standby consumption is 60 watts. I forgot to mention that as well. Some of my viewers said that this was also put on the wrong way. That is absolutely false. You can have this mounted any way that you please. If these did not seal out rain because of headwinds from driving this vehicle, then I would not use this. These grommets can handle a hurricane. If they can't, then I'm gonna buy a new one. When I mount these, I like to make them in the most readily accessible area so I can swap out the conductors or add more solar panels whenever I please. I have seen other people mount these in the middle of the roof, which seems very illogical to me. If I'm on the road and I wanna get up here easily, I wanna have it at the edge and at the front. It's nice to access these so that you can check if they are tight or not. I've mounted these on every vehicle that I've lived in, minus the minivan. I actually used the grommet for the rear tail lights on that build so that I could seal out water. But yeah, this is totally fine. There's nothing wrong with this. But there was a good point about securing these wires. If these flap in the wind, that would suck. But I did have a viewer complain that this breaks easily. So I actually changed out the link for a higher quality one. This one I bought at Home Depot and it's actually worked great, but he said he broke three of them. So yeah, I swapped it out for a more higher quality one in the links. Another concern was loading this trailer with too much weight, and I lived in RVs and vans for nine years, so I absolutely understand that. I would never exceed the weight limit of this trailer. And right now we have it loaded to about 350 pounds, but it's not equally distributed. And if I were to add another battery bank to this system, I would put it on this side. This trailer can hold 1,600 pounds, so it's not really that big of a concern. But if I were to add more batteries, I would absolutely be thinking about that. Also, we're going to be adding an air conditioner, and some people were saying, can it be done? And actually, if you watch my older videos, we put it in my solar shed and we insulated it. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen that, please check out my older videos where I go into much more depth and detail on how to do that type of system. And some of my viewers suggested having an AC input and output on the outside of the trailer. And I'm still trying to find a nice receptacle to build that. But yeah, I totally agree. I want to do that too. That would be so awesome. I also might add a Victron smart shunt to this system because I love that thing. The Bluetooth distance isn't that good though, so I'd have to be close to the system to check. It would be nice if I could drive my RAV4 and while driving I could see the stats of this system, but I'm asking a bit too much. That Bluetooth range is not that great. Anyways, we'll have some more videos adding things to this system. It's a nice, simple, fun to build system, and I love it. I, and I hope you guys like the video. It's super cold, so I'm going to go back inside. All right, have a nice day. Bye.